Hey everyone, it's a bonus race from Assetto Corsa Competizione this weekend as I take on the GT4 series at Donington Park on Low Fuel Motorsport. It is a huge single split grid of 29 cars and I'll be starting from P13 after posting a qualifying lap time of 135.6. Now I need to find at least another 4 or 5 tenths to even think about challenging for the top 10 and I'll be realistic, that is very unlikely to happen. So today is all about consolidating a top 15 finish and trying to stay out of trouble. When you see how wild it gets out there, you'll understand why that's such a huge challenge. Right, here we go then, the lights are green, we are underway with 30 minutes at Donington Park. And I wasn't quite so quick across the line as that number 10 McLaren alongside me. Chuck Maurice has picked up the position. Oh, Ginetta out of control in front, there's only one gap, I've got to go for it. I thought I might get hit and I did. Wow, I'm grateful to get through that seemingly without any damage. I've still got Maurice on my inside. I think I'm going to have to yield the position here for safety's sake. Meanwhile, there are clouds of dust all over the place coming down the Craner curbs. There are cars off to the left, cars off to the right. It is absolute mayhem here on the opening lap. No way through for me there. I had no choice but to lift. Look at the gold Porsche to the right. Kian Merdolo has barely got back onto the track and he's going to get elbowed right back off it. And yeah, more contact in front. Immediately, I'm going to have to go as wide as possible through McLean's to get around that. Meanwhile, Merdolo rejoining at speed in front. Dear me, it is getting wild out here. Sebastian Hanini in the Maserati came through like a wrecking ball. He barred Skian Merdolo out onto the grass and he quickly followed that up by taking himself and Chuck Maurice out. I honestly feel lucky to have survived, but I can't get complacent because there's the potential of a dive bomb. And I'm going to abort this corner at the last possible second because I just caught a glimpse of that Ginetta driven by Philippe Winther flying in. And it's going to cost me several positions here. I've lost all my momentum by taking to the gravel there, but I think it was the wise thing to do. Had I tried to hold my line, I would have been drilled there. We'll have to go back and take another look at the replay to see if I made the wise decision there. But for now, it has cost me four places. I've dropped from 11th down into P15. But honestly, I think just surviving this opening lap has been a success in itself. It was wild out there. Let's go back and take a look at some of the replays to see exactly what happened. Right, the lights have just gone green. We're keeping an eye out for the number 13 Ginetta of Philippe Winther. It's the green and black Ginetta on the outside. He's taking the wide entry into Redgate, but then he comes back in to try and make the apex. Of course, there's a car on his inside. It's the first corner of the race. Sion KP spins him around. We're now riding on board with Sebastian Hanini, and we can see the hit that I got there. That was a big one. And then it only got messier coming down the Craner curves. That is John Saunders in the McLaren. Started P3 but getting tangled up at the top of the hill and sent out into the barrier. And this incident started a sequence of disasters that caused absolute mayhem. We're now watching Kevin Schweitzer in the Porsche. How about this for a rejoin? He's coming back on track at full speed across the track. Poor old Kian Merdolo. There was nothing he could do there. He was barged right out onto the grass. And unfortunately for Merdolo, it wouldn't be the last time he was going to get elbowed. This is at the very next corner with Hanini in that Maserati barging his way through. He's pushed Merdolo out onto the grass again and then he's out of control, runs right into the back of Chuck Maurice. Look how wide a line I have to take through McLean's to stay safe there. And staying safe was again the name of the game coming into the S's. At the very last minute, I saw that Ginetta of Winter coming up the inside. I didn't think he was going to leave me space, so I went out onto the gravel and look at that. It was a good job I did. I always believe that if someone leaves you space on the inside into a chicane, you should return the favour and leave space on the inside when you exit it. Winter didn't there. He went straight for the apex, so I am glad I backed out of that one. If I tried to hold my line, fight the position too wide through the chicane, it would have inevitably ended up in a crash. Well, that's exactly what happened at Redgate at the start of lap two. There is still mayhem. And honestly, people just need to calm down a bit. It's not like we're rushing here. We've got 30 minutes at Donington Park, but these drivers are throwing everything at it on the opening laps. Right, back to the live action. We're now on lap three. I'm up into P13. That's because of a drive through penalty. Graham Potter, who had started P10, was penalised when the lights went green for his position on track. He's had to go and serve that penalty in pit lane and it's given me a position. So yeah, up to P13. Can I make any more progress? Well, not with mistakes like that.
at this, I get really loose going through the old hairpin. And that is not only going to see me lose ground on Andrea Ruggieri in front of me, but it is also going to give a golden opportunity to Manuel Ramos in that McLaren behind. Oh dear, I'm all over the place at the moment. An even bigger mistake into McLean's out onto the kerb. That is going to give Ramos the opportunity he needs to tuck it up the inside and take P13. So no sooner do I get that 13th position, I have lost it. Ramos making progress, me going backwards. Right, we're now going to jump forward a couple of laps to the end of lap five. And I'm actually struggling to keep up with Ramos. He's now opened up a gap of nearly one and a half seconds. So Ramos is on a charge here, but that does mean he's closed right in on Andrea Ruggieri in 12th position. Now I'm hoping these two will start to slow each other down, particularly now Ruggieri has made a big mistake through the Melbourne loop. And we can see from the picture-in-picture -picture action just how close the pair of them are now. Ruggieri has put himself under plenty of pressure with that missed apex through the hairpin. So can Manuel Ramos do anything about it? He's certainly closer than he's ever been. That gap just 0.4 of a second now as they cross the line to start lap six of this race. We're still only at one third race distance. So plenty of time still to go. I do feel like I've got the pace in me to close back in on these guys. I just need to settle down a bit and find a better rhythm. It should be easier to do now that I've got a bit of space both in front and behind me. Ramos is one and a half seconds clear ahead while Kevin Uberholz is one and a half seconds back behind. Through the old hairpin then, Ruggieri a little bit wide on exit and it has cost him big time. Ruggieri crashes out into the barrier. So Ramos's pressure paid off. He's up into P12 and I'm up into P13. Right, we're going to jump forward now to two-thirds race distance because I've been steadily chipping away at that advantage that Ramos has built up. When we left the action on lap six, he was one and a half seconds clear. Now we've returned to it. That gap is just 0.6 of a second. I've been taking 0 0.2, 0 0.3 out of him every lap. And now, finally, he is within sight. I've really had to improve my consistency over the last 10 minutes to begin reeling Ramos in. And now I'm closer. Maybe I can put him under pressure already. There's sign of a mistake. Ramos was wide through McLean's. However, I was equally wide, which lost me any possible advantage I could have picked up. So the gap's still 0.6 of a second. You'll also notice we've both gained a position. That's because Kevin Schweitzer in the Porsche has retired. He picked up a drive through penalty and decided enough was enough. But for now, I've got to concentrate on trying to reel this gap back into Ramos. And this might be my golden opportunity because he's made a big mistake through the S's. Meanwhile, I've timed my charge perfectly. I'm going to swoop down the inside. Now, I've certainly made the overtake before we reach the apex. But it is absolutely vital that I close off this inside line on exit. It is a block pass just to stop Ramos from trying the switchback. And yeah, given how evenly matched we both are on pace, I always thought it would come down to a mistake if I was going to get past Ramos. And that is exactly what happens. He ends up taking the same line that I took voluntarily on the opening lap. So I knew from experience how much it slowed you down and I was able to take full advantage. Uh, any hopes I had of pulling away fairly quickly were soon dashed because Ramos was going nowhere. I switched the TV cam on just so he could keep an eye on things from his on board. The gap is just 0.4 of a second as we come down through the Craner curves. You know he's going to be feeling frustration after making that mistake that cost him 11th position. So you know he's going to fight to get it back. Now I was a little bit loose through the old hairpin there. That has allowed him to close right back in. So I'm going to make my Porsche as big as I possibly can. I'm going to take the defensive route into McLean's. I need to make sure I'm not leaving even the slightest gap because if I do, Ramos will attempt to move up it. So as we come into Coppice, I'm still holding it as tight as I possibly can. And actually, I get a faster exit out of this right-hander. I've opened up a bit of breathing room now. Yeah, it was only half a second, but it was crucial. We've now jumped forward to the 17th lap. There's just three minutes left on the clock. And as you can see, the gap is still 0.6 of a second. I've just about managed to keep enough daylight between the two of us that Ramos isn't close enough to make a move. And of course, driving smoothly and consistency is absolutely key to this. Even the slightest mistake, Ramos will be swarming all over the rear of my Lamborghini. Well, I'm having to cope with a lot of pressure at the moment, but so far I am holding firm. Thankfully, the same can't be said for Ramos. Look in the rearview mirror. He has run out wide into Goddard, so that effectively handed me 11th position. Finally, I can take a breath. It was a real relief to see this mistake in the rearview mirror. And for Ramos, he just manages to hold on to that P12, get him back on track right in front of Sebastian Hanini.
Well, I said before the start of this race, it was all about consolidating a top 15 position, and that is exactly what I've done. I haven't quite got the pace to make it into the top 10, but I am more than happy with a P11. And actually, my race pace was quite a bit slower than my qualifying performance. Look at that. Fastest lap in the race of 136.3. That doesn't compare very well at all to my qualifying effort of 135.6. If I had managed to match my qualifying times, then maybe I could have challenged for a top 10. But as it was, P11 was about as good as I could have hoped for. As always, thank you ever so much for tuning in. And wherever you're racing this weekend, I hope you have a good one. Cheers for now.